Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome if you're new, welcome if you're not. Today we're doing a shop my stash, get ready with me. So let's get into it. As you can see, my melasma is out to play. So, you know, this is just what it is. It will hopefully fade as we get into the cooler months when I'm getting less direct sunlight. I also wanted to mention that I was chatting with my girl Angela from Beauty and Life with Angela last night. Uh, we were just talking about YouTube like we normally do and I asked her to pick my makeup today from my Shop My Stash makeup items. So Angela did pick this makeup and also wanted to mention that she created a new end screen for me. So make sure to check that out at the end of the video and leave her a comment down below too if you'd like telling her how much you like it. So I already have the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer on. Mine is getting very, very low, but I do really like this and I would definitely consider repurchasing it. For foundation, I'm going in with my Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer, the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer, and I have the shade 24N. I think today I'm just honestly going to dot this around and blend it with my sponge. So how are all of you guys dealing? Are you getting into the fall spirit or not quite yet? I'm getting there. I'm over the heat and all of that, but I am looking forward to fall. I really love fall, even though it's one of the harder seasons for me with my fibromyalgia flares. Um, I, I just love it. I love the weather. I love my fall clothes. I am a total kid at heart and I love crunching through the leaves on a good, you know, crisp fall walk. I just, yeah, I love fall. Fall and spring are probably my favorite seasons. I do love summer and I love, you know, the experience of summer, but it's also really hot and I don't always do the best in the heat. I am still really a big fan of this tinted moisturizer and I'm already starting to lose my tan. So it had been a while since I was able to wear it because of my summer tan and all that. So I was really excited to put this in Shop My Stash for the month and get more use out of it. It really doesn't look like I've used it much, but I really have. So I'm excited to get a lot more use out of it over the cooler months. And then I'm gonna spot conceal a few areas with my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This is in the shade Cafe Con Leche. And I do really like this for any spots or to help conceal the melasma on my upper lip. Nothing seems to conceal it completely. And sometimes I do this before foundation, but for whatever reason, I feel like this works better to apply it after with a lighter coverage product. I just press it in there really good and then I kind of go around the spot in a circle for blending. And then for concealer under the eyes or in the rest of the face, I am using my Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Vanilla. This is one product that I just never have really gotten the hype over really. I think this is definitely falls under the category of products that I regret buying or that I'm mad at myself because I just couldn't let go of the hype, even though I probably already knew that I wasn't going to like this. It's a little more full coverage. I don't know, it looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look terrible under the eyes or anything. Do you guys ever feel like the bigger the product in terms of product amount makes you want to apply more than what you normally would? I don't know. For whatever reason, I am always tempted to use more of a product that has a lot of product in it, which is so weird. I don't know if that's a project panning thing or what, but it does look nice today. Before I set with powder, I am going to set my face with setting spray. This is not the Charlotte Tilbury, it's just the bottle. This is the Milani Make It Last. I went a little overboard with that. But this technique definitely helps a lot 
in terms of the longevity of my makeup and that is setting my makeup before I powder. One thing I've been doing for a while now is using a powder puff with my loose powder for setting my face and I specifically like to do this in the t-zone and then set the perimeter of my face with you know a more fluffy powder brush. And this is just so super smoothing and it really helps lock in my makeup, I feel like. So I don't know, have you guys tried this? Definitely a TikTok thing. Everybody sets their face with powder puffs over there. This one happens to be a makeup for everyone, but I also get the regular like triangle puffs over on um, Amazon. They're not name brand or anything. They're just some off brand, but you can get a bunch of them for just, I don't know, a few dollars, under $10 for sure. So this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder in the shade Light. I just did a full face of e.l.f. over on my TikTok again the other day because I got my hands on the Halo Glow Liquid Filter, which I do like so far. Um, I didn't put it in today's video, but it is nice. So far, I've only used it to kind of like mix with um, foundation. I've been mixing it with the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear, and it's really nice in that capacity. And I do think from the formula, it feels like a product that I could use as a coverage product which I don't ever, I've never felt that way about the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filters. So there's definitely a difference between the two. And I'm also going to set my under eye with a puff, but I'm going to use my number seven Lift and Luminate. Love this stuff. The only one I use under my eyes to this day. And actually really enjoying applying it with the powder puff. So the bronzer that Angela picked is the Nabla Skin Bronzing Sunkissed Effect Bronzing Powder. I have the shade Soft Revenge, and I'm just taking this brush from Dallium Tools here to pick it up and start warming up the face. Warming up the blank canvas. I would have to say out of the three skin formulas, from Nabla, um, as in like their blush, their highlight, and bronzer. I'd probably say the bronzer is my least favorite. It's fine, but it is nice. It's kind of interesting because it is a baked jelly formula, so you do kind of have to be a little rough with it and pick it up on a brush. Some brushes don't work that well, like my super soft one here that's a dupe for the Morphe and Ariel collection. This is a Jessup brush. It's just too soft. It really doesn't pick up much product at all. For blush, Angela chose one from one of the two face palettes that I chose for this rotation, and it is my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked. And she chose this pinky shade here based on the eyeshadows that she picked out for me. So we're gonna pinking things up here. I love pink blush. So pretty. I also really like mixing these two. Sometimes the two blushes, the pink and the more nude one. Of course, they all have a glow, but the peachy nude one has um, almost like more of a shimmer to it, actually. Little blush on the shin the nose and the upper hairline. In my opinion, you can never have too much blush. I mean, you can, but you'd have to be really trying <laughs> for me to feel that way. Okay, right quick before we do the highlighter, I'm going to use a little bit of my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light just to blend the colored cheek products. I find that this has been helping lately with anything that looks a little bit patchy, which it usually isn't, but 
with all the melasma on my skin, it just kind of makes it look a little patchy. So the highlighter she picked is a cream one. It's this one from Merit Beauty in the shade Bounce, which is a rose gold shade, looks like so. So since I have powder blush and bronzer, I decided to do highlighter last and just tap it over the top. I really do love these highlighters and I think the reason I don't gravitate toward them t as much is because they're so balmy. But if this holds up on my cheeks today over the blush and bronzer, I think I'll use them a lot more. I love Merit Beauty products though. Oh, I forgot to blend out my brow bone here. Yeah, you should be able to see it. It's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna pop off of here and do brows and eyeshadow primer, and then we'll be back for eyeshadow and lips. All right, I'm back and we're ready for eyeshadow. And I did go ahead and set my eyeshadow primer down with this shade right here. This is my custom palette that I built for sort of the intro into fall. This shade that I set my primer with is called Peach Sickle and it is from Beauty Junkies. Now I'm gonna go into this shade right here, which is the shade Iced Mocha from Sydney Grace. And it's a really pretty sort of neutral to cool tone transition shade for my skin tone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by diffusing this into the transition and crease and we'll go from there. Are you guys pulling out fall eyeshadows yet or your favorite fall products at all? I'm definitely getting there as you would know if you did watch my Shop My Stash video where I shopped for these products that I'm using today. Um, if you haven't though, it, I'm sure it'll be like on the end screen or something like that. Just editing Kyra's good like that. See how easily that just blended out into perfection? Love. Also going to run the same shade on my lower lash line. I am not gonna talk about it just yet, but you guys are going to poop your panties when you hear where I'm getting PR from. I'm so excited. Probably something that will go up on my channel next week probably the second half of the week, providing everything arrives on time as it should. Next, I'm gonna take this matte green right here, which is the shade Wildlife from Sydney Grace. And this is going to be the outer corner shade and our depth for this look. Kind of just taking my time and focusing on the shape which I kind of want to be just a little bit more angular than I would typically do. And then I'm gonna take more iced mocha to make sure we have a nice soft blend in the crease. I'm gonna also run what's left of the green on this flat brush under the eyes before I go in and use it for a shimmer. So if there's one thing Angela and I have in common, it's that we love pink and green together. So I'm gonna take this shade right here, which is the shade Recruit from Sydney Grace. Love, love, love their shimmer formula. And this is gonna go on the center of the lid. And then I will add in the pink. These shades from Sydney Grace, like all of their shadows are such high quality. They layer beautifully. Like, how could you even deny? I mean, I'm tempted to just keep it green right now, but Angela's the boss for this video. And then taking a clean flat brush, I'm gonna go into this pink right here, which is called Blondie. And this is just an e.l.f. Um, eyeshadow brush. I think it's literally called the eyeshadow brush. Um, and I've had this thing for years. I use, It used to be my favorite um, brow bone um, brush, and I do still love it for that. What do we think? The pink is subtle, that's for sure. Let's see if we can build it up a little bit. Because I don't want to take away 
too much of the metallic green either. Gotta tell you about a little funny thing that I did on my TikTok a, a few days ago. And that was I cut open my beauty sponge to see, cause I get, a, I get out a new beauty sponge every month. I get a fresh one out and <laughs> So I was keen to see like how clean I was getting it basically. And so I cut it open and you know, spoiler alert, it was clean inside. I couldn't believe it. I'm gonna go back into that other flat brush and pick up more of the matte green and just kind of run it along the upper lash line a little bit. I'm gonna go into Sugared Shortbread from Beauty Junkies up here for my very subtle inner corner highlight and also on the brow bone. Do you guys feel like these um, techniques, I don't know what I call it a technique, but do you feel like the brow bone highlight thing is like just going way out of fashion? Cause I do, I feel like not a lot of people are doing it anymore and I, don't all the time but I felt like it today and then lastly one more blend all right I'm gonna pop off up here and do mascara real quickly off camera and then we'll get on to the lips all right I am back and I'm so sorry if that last part the audio was not good I forgot to turn my fan back down after I did my brows and eyeshadow primer because I get so hot in here but I know that the ceiling fan can cause problems when it's on high. So anyways, the lipstick that Angela chose is this one from Pat McGrath. It is her matte trance lipstick in the shade Omi number 107. And I believe this was special packaging for some collection that she did. And then I also forgot to mention, I used Maybelline Sky Heart on my lashes and I'm loving it. And I'm gonna line it with Maxor because this turns out to be the perfect lip liner for this lipstick. Dang, then I'm gonna get a copyright strike because I was playing music in the background, dang it. Okay, Maxor looking pretty, 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 pretty. And now to the lipstick. These lipsticks are really comfortable. I enjoy this one. It's just one that's kind of for certain occasions. Not special or anything, just more like, I kind of have to have an overall softer look, I feel like, to wear this tone or this deep of a shade, I guess. I don't know. I'm hoping I will get a lot of use out of it this fall. There we go. Goodness sake, the curls. Oh, good enough. So this is the completed look of my Shop My Stash products that Angela picked. What do we think? Let me know down below. What are you shopping your stash for right now? I'm really enjoying this current rotation of products already. If you watched the original Shop My Stash video, let me know if there's any other specific videos that you would like to see. Otherwise, look for a surprise video sometime next week with that mind-blowing PR that I'm receiving. So uh, I hope you guys are all doing well and I hope all of your makeup days are absolutely beautiful makeup days. Bye.